Hi, so this is going to be the first video of a whole series I'm planning to create on writing more Pythonic code. Because often we end up writing an algorithm kind of using the first solution that comes to mind. And especially if you have a background that maybe in another programming language like Java or JavaScript or C, and also if you're just a beginner. And the thing is that each language has kind of its strengths and unique abilities and unique ways of doing things. So simply translating an algorithm from one language to another doesn't necessarily take advantage of the target language features specifically. And of course, that is true with Python as well. Python has some very unique language features that as Python developers, we really should leverage. And this is often called writing idiomatic Python or just Pythonic code. It just means leveraging the language features that Python provides or that the standard library in Python provides in order to do certain things. So in this series, we're going to look at various specific examples and I will just keep adding, you know, videos like that over time. And I'll create a playlist in the channel called Idiomatic Python and you'll find all the videos basically in there as well. Some are going to be very, very short. Some are going to be a little bit longer and I'm probably never going to be able to cover everything. But hopefully over time we'll get there. And you'll find also that some of the topics I'm going to cover are more general than just Python. They're going to be applicable to general development as well. All right, so basically that's it, just introducing what the series is going to be. So for this video, we're going to look at the iter function. You've probably used the iter function before if you were trying to recover an iterator from an iterable so that you could then call next on it. That's a very typical use case. For example, we could do this. We could say numbers equals one, comma two, comma three, comma four. Uh, let's do, add one more. So numbers is a list, right? And it is therefore an iterable, but it is not an iterator. So we can't call next on numbers. If, if we try and call next on numbers, that's not going to work because a list is not an iterator. We need an iterator in order to iterate over an object. But that's very easy to do. We use the iter function and now we get this iterator. Let's just call it iterator equals iter numbers. So when we have that, iterator now, we can see what iterator is. It's basically a list iterator. And on this, we can call next, right? So we get that. If we do that again, we'll get the next value in the list and so on. And of course, this is what the for loop uses. When you iterate over a list, the for loop essentially gets the iterator from the list and then it uses next until the stop iteration exception has been raised. And I cover that in some of my Python courses. So this is the common way of using iter. We retrieve an iterator and then you can call next on it. But iter actually has a variant where it can be called with two arguments. Now in that case, the first argument needs to be a callable, essentially a function or method or whatever can be called, right? And then the second argument is what's called a sentinel value. When you call iter with those two arguments, it builds and returns an iterator. So it actually goes ahead and builds an iterator. It doesn't just go and get an iterator from an existing iterable or iterator. It builds a new iterator, which does what? It basically keeps making that callable call. So it uses that callable that's in the first argument of, of iter. And it keeps calling that until that callable returns a value equal to, using equality, not identity, equal to the sentinel value. So here's a rather silly example. We'll take a look at a more realistic example in a bit. Let's just go ahead and do this, just so we can get a feel for what this does. So I'll import the random module, and then I'm going to define this function. Let's call it rand int. So it's going to generate random integers. And this is not actually going to generate a sequence of integers. This is not going to be a generator function. It's just going to return a single random integer. So rand int between 0 and 10, like so. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to generate a sequence of those random integers. 
until we hit 5 for the first time. So this 5 is going to be our sentinel value. So one way of doing it, the kind of the you know, traditional or what I would say the non-Pythonic way, the non-idiomatic way of doing it, would be as follows. So we'll set the C just so we have repeatable results everywhere. And then I'm going to set my sentinel value equal to 5. And then I'm going to do an infinite loop, so while true. And then I'm going to get the result, right, from calling that function. And then if the result is not equal to sentinel, then I'm going to print the result just so that we see the output. And then otherwise, if it was equal to the sentinel, I'm going to break out of the infinite loop. So this might be one way of essentially generating this sequence, right, of random integers until we hit five. And so as you can see, we get these numbers and then the next one was actually five and this is why we don't see it printed and the iteration essentially stops. So the more Pythonic way is to use the iter function to achieve exactly the same thing. So first, we're going to essentially create the iterator that we want because we want to have basically the ability to iterate those numbers, 6, 6, 0, 4, etc. So we're going to create it by calling the iter function. And here it needs the callable. And the callable is randint. And then the sentinel value is going to be 5. So if we look at what that is, if we to do the type and print that, you'll see that it is a callable iterator. And this is because this iter function essentially generated an iterator using a callable, hence the name of this object, callable iterator. And we can now use it this way. So we can say random.seed0, again, just to reset the random number generator so that we'll generate the same sequence of numbers. And then we could say for number id. Now I could just use the iterator that I created, but instead, I'm just going to retype here iter gen rand int, and then we'll say the sentinel 5, and then we'll just print the number. And that's it. And sorry, that should be 5. This is why we got no output, because the first number was 6. So, and this is why, by the way, I also reset my seed and chose 5. Okay, so here you can see we have exactly the same sequence of numbers. Here's the Pythonic way of doing it. We can use iter. And here's the more traditional and non-Pythonic way of doing it. You can see much simpler code. Now, how about if the function that we want to call needs arguments? Because that happens very often. You know, if let's say we have this random int function. So let's redefine it. Let's say def gen rand int. But this time I'm going to pass it a min value and a max value. And I'm, of course, using the underscore so I don't collide with the built-in min and max. And then I'm going to return from random. We'll do the same thing. We'll just return rand int as before. But now I'm going to use those two arguments. So this rand int function now needs those arguments to be passed. So I cannot just say iter gen rand int and let's say with a sentinel value again, like before of five, this isn't going to work. I mean, it created the, the iterable because it doesn't care about, it doesn't actually call this until we start iterating. So now if I try to do a next on this, you'll see that we'll get an exception, right? So this gen rand int is missing the two required positional arguments, min underscore and max underscore. Well, yes, we know that we need this. So how do we get around this problem? Well, it's actually quite simple. We can use one of two options. One is to use a lambda function so that we basically pre-populate the min and max. And we can also use a partial function. So whatever you're most comfortable using. Let's go ahead and say that my new function, my gen lambda, I'm going to make that a lambda function, which does not take an argument. And that, whenever that lambda gets called, it should return the value of calling rand int with 0 and 10 as my min and max, just as before. 
So I can call this gen lambda right now without any arguments, and it is going to essentially generate a random number between 0 and 10 because that's what I specified here. So this is one way of doing it. Another way of doing it would be to say gen partial equals, and then we're going to need to, from func tools, we need to import partial. And then par that is going to be the partial. So essentially, we're going to curry those two arguments 0 and 10. So we're going to take gen rand int, and then we'll put 0 and 10. So partial essentially does the exact same thing that we did here with the lambda, like so. So we can do that. And now I can call gen partial and I don't have to pass any arguments because it is going to call gen rand int with 0 and 10 already. As you can see, we get a result for that. So these are the two kind of methods that we can use when we have a callable that actually requires arguments to be called. Of course, the arguments will stay the same every time they're called. So let's take a look. Let's just do that quickly. So let's just make sure that all this works. So random seed zero. And then I'm going to say, I'm just going to pick up the first four, let's say, elements. And we are going to, let's say, print gen partial. So we'll use the, the partial first, right? So if we do that, you'll see that we get the number 6604. And then, of course, we'll get the same thing if we use the lambda. Let's just check that and make sure. So gen lambda. And as you can see, we get the same output. So now we can use our iter function again to basically generate these random numbers until we hit the sentinel value. Very simple, just like we did before. I actually just going to copy paste the code that we had over here, right? So this is what we're going to do. But now instead of using gen rand int, we're going to use gen uh, lambda. See, we get the same result and we can use gen partial and we get the same result as well. Okay, so this is how the iter function with two arguments work. So this was kind of a silly example, as I said. A very common application of using iter this way is when we're reading data from a source in chunks of a certain size. And that happens very, very often when you're reading data, let's say, from a socket. You want to read the data in chunks, maybe, you know, 128 bytes or maybe, what you know, whatever the chunk size is. And you want to keep doing that until the chunk that's returned is an empty value. And in that case, you know that you've retrieved all the data that there is to retrieve and you can stop processing. So what are you doing? You're calling the same function again and again, passing you know, with the same chunk size saying, read 100 bytes, read 100 bytes, read 100 bytes, and keep repeating this until what gets returned is an empty string, for example, or an empty you know, byte string. So very much what we would see here. And of course, the Pythonic way of doing that is using iter. So let's take a look at an example. I'm not going to use sockets and so on. That's That's kind of... You know, I don't want to get into the weeds with sockets in this video. And I, in the Jupyter Notebook that's linked below, you'll see that even in the Python docs, they show you this relatively non-Pythonic, non-idiomatic way of retrieving data from a socket. So I've got a link in the, in the Jupyter Notebook that you can go and see. So here I'm not going to use sockets. What I'm going to do instead to mimic that is I'm going to read a text file in chunks just so we can see how this works, and we can see it's the same pattern that's going to apply. So let's do this. I'm going to create a file first, since I don't have one. So let's go ahead and say with open text file, we'll make it writable as f. And then we're going to say for x in range 10, let's say, and f dot write, um, let's say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so basically, I'm going to write this sequence of digits, the sequence of characters, 10 times to a file. No line breaks, nothing like that. Okay, so we can read back the, the file line by line. So we could say open, 
text uh, test.txt. Now, of course, there's only one line in this. And so you could say for line in f dot read lines if you want to read you know one line at a time. As I said, there's only one line, but in general, you would do that. You can see we get our first line, which has these characters. But now what I want to do is I want to read this file in chunks of 10 characters at a time. So the, you know, what would be the traditional quote unquote way of doing it would be to say with open test.txt as f. So we open the file using a context manager. Then we start an infinite loop and we say chunk equals f dot read 10 characters like so. So now we've read 10 characters from the file. We're going to print the chunk just so we can see the output. And then we're going to say if the chunk is equal to an empty string, that means we're done. We've got nothing left to read. We can break out of the while loop. And let's use double equals for equality comparison. And as you can see, it read it in chunks of 10 characters. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be. I could read it in chunks of five characters. That would work the same way. So now let's use the Pythonic way of doing it. So we're going to say with open test.txt. And I need to put quotes around that. And I don't need to specify I want to open this as a read. That's the default. And then we're going to say for chunk in hitter. Now I have to pass to the read function. I have to pass five to it, right? So I cannot just say here f dot read because I have to really tell it what it should be, the read size. So I'm going to say partial, right? F dot read. Or you could use the Lambda approach that I just showed you. But here I'm going to use the partial. And then, then let's go back to, let's say, doing 10 characters at a time. And then I want to stop when I have nothing that came back, right? So we do that and then we can just print the chunk. And typically I might do a strip to remove extraneous, you know, line, new line characters, but there isn't any in this, so it doesn't really matter. So if we do this, we get the same thing, right? And of course we can change this. It's how I want to read seven characters at a time. You can see that it works just fine. And of course, if you prefer the Lambda option, I know some people really do not like partials. So then you can just say Lambda and that's going to be F dot read you know, whatever number you want, like so, right? So it's this iter is going to call this lambda function with no arguments, and the return every time it gets called is going to be reading seven characters from the file. So you'll get the same result out that way. So compare the two approaches. Let me just copy paste them here from the notebook. Compare these code. Compare this code. It works, nothing wrong with it in the sense that it works, but compare it to the more Pythonic way of doing it, either this one or this one. My view is that the second or third option is far more Pythonic, it's far more expressive than the first option. It's expressive, how? Because I can kind of read this and says, well, for chunk in, keep repeating this until this is empty and then do something with that chunk. Here, it's like, okay, do an infinite loop, then read this, then do that, then test, and then break out of the loop. It's a, it's a lot harder to understand. It's not as expressive. And this is my first example of writing Pythonic code. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video on writing Pythonic code.